Hey, hi everyone. In this session, we will see how to set up Python development environment. Essentially, we will see three steps. VS Code, VS Code Python extension, Python 3. By the end of this session, you will have Python development environment ready on your machine and you should be ready to write Python programs. All right, so let's get started. So this VS Code is a basically IDE, which is Integrated Development Environment. Once you will have VS Code ID, then you will have to install Python extension on top of it. Once you have Python extension ready, which means through that editor, you can write Python programs. And this Python 3, this is a kind of EXE which should be available on your machine. So I'll cover these three things one by one. So first thing first, so we'll start with VS Code, right? So if you go to this URL, code.visualstudio.com, right? So this is Visual Studio Code by Microsoft. And here you, you will see this download for Windows link. Once you click on this, you will get a download installer exe and then you can just click on that exe and this vs code will be installed on your machine next thing is this extension right so once you have vs code ready so then you can use vs code extension but before that i would suggest to have python installed on your machine in order to have python right you can go to the official site of python which is python.org.downloads and uh, on the home page of this python site you will again see this download python 3.9 so this is the current latest version of for windows and if you are using another operating system for example linux unix and you can see there are different options available so depending on your os you can download the setup once you download the setup again you again you will get one python.pythonexe you have to just double click on python exe it will install python on your machine just to check how i mean once you have downloaded and installed python you can double check the installation is successful or not by using this command pi hyphen hyphen version and if you are able to see the version view which you have installed on this command prompt which means the python is installed successfully so on my machine we i have python 3.9.1 i repeat this command pi hyphen hyphen version using this command you can check the current installation of python on your machine so this python part is covered so i'll assume that you will install python on your machine from this official site and you can check the version as well coming back to this vs visual studio code once you download and install you will get visual studio code also on your machine so visual studio code i will call it vs code which is normally called so vs code will be on your machine and once you have visual studio code on desktop you will see this kind of icon or maybe in the start menu you will see visual studio code just double click on visual studio code this is the as you can see this message welcome visual studio code so this is the editor of vs code right and coming back to our agenda so we wanted to cover these three things and I, as i promised earlier once you have these three things your python development environment will be ready so we covered python 3 part by installing python and checking its version we covered vs code part because you could see this visual studio uh, code editor and now we will cover this vs code python extension because we want to write python programs in this editor vs code right so we have to install this python extension now i'm going to tell you how we can install this python extension so this is the editor the home page of vs code or visual studio code and you will see this icon right so this icon stands for extension so just click on this icon extensions so you will get this extensions pop-up or panel I would say or section extension section and here you could type python right 
Once you click on Python, you will get a bunch of options. So you have to install the first one, which is Python and whose publisher is Microsoft because there are many publishers like Commerce, Dawn, right? These many publishers. We have to focus on the first one, which is published by Microsoft because this VS code is from Microsoft. So we, sh we should install Python extension, which is provided by or which is published by Microsoft. So I will click on this. Once you click, as you can see, this is Python extension by Microsoft. Here at the right top, we will see this install button. You have to just click on install. And installation is in progress. As you can see, this pop up installing. And this will install Python extension into Visual Studio Code. All right, so once you have installed Python extension, then you, you could see this kind of option like disable or uninstall. And in this section, you will see Python already installed, right? All right, so now we have Python extension available in our VS code. So let's now create our first project and we will try to write a simple program today. Okay, which means our development environment is ready. Now I'm going, I'm going to show you how we can write our first Python program. For that, you could do, you can go to your C drive, any, any location and here you can create a new project. So let's say I'm creating new, you can create a new folder and let's say you are saying that this is my, uh, my first project. You can create any folder at any location, right? my first project and inside that in this first project I would like to create one more folder let's say uh, in which I will write my programs right so I will create a folder let's say programming okay so I have created my first project and inside my, so my first project folder I created programming folder and let's copy this location we will go to Visual Studio Code and here we can see this file option, file menu. If we click on file, then the, using this file menu option, you can open any file, you can open a folder, open a workspace. Since I have created a folder, I will click on this open folder. If you click on open folder and just paste the location. So we are going to select programming folder in my C drive, right? Select folder. Now VS Code is that much intelligent that it is saying that, hey, you are in this programming folder, right? This is the same folder which we have created. Now, I would like to write my first program in Python. For that I can do, and here we can see this bunch of options. Like if I see the first option is new file, second option is new folder. We can further create many folders from VS Code now, but this time we want to write our Python program. So I will create a new file and I will name this file as let's say um, hello world dot py. So any Python uh, programs we can write in Python files, right? And the extension for Python files are .py. So I have created a file hello world.py. This .py Python extension is very important. I just press enter and I can see this editor window. And here I can write Python programs, right? So I'll start with very simple basics. So I'll start with print command and print is a function in which we can pass. And this, this description we will see, we can pass any string so let's say i will say print this is my first program in python all right and we can run this so if you click on this run menu right so we can use this control f5 or run without debugging
and as you can see this successfully got executed and in the console we could see this this is my first program in python so congratulations we have written our first python program hello world in this file hello world.py file and uh, so this was our agenda for today's session how to set up python development environment and we saw so we saw how how we can install vs code how we can install python and then we can also check the python version and then we install vs code python extension with these three things we are good to go and we have completed our first program by simple printing uh, one string right this is my first program in python so from here on we can write python programs we can create frameworks and other stuffs but the main point is now we have our environment ready and now we can explore python so uh, with this i would like to conclude today's session and uh, always as i always say uh, keep learning keep growing thank you Hey, hi everyone. In this session, we will see Python fundamentals and we'll start with if statements. So what are if statements in Python programming? So if statements are a kind of conditional logic, like uh, if there are two situations, if situation A happens, we do something. And if situation B happens, we will do another thing. And let's see how we can understand more if statements in python so i will go to my vs code editor and to understand if statements so we will write a simple program which will give us an idea like what exactly if statements are and how we can use if statements in python programming so i will create a new file let's say if statements you can give any name to this file just for understanding i'm saying if statement and the extension should be python okay just to make uh, these things interesting i'm going to use input function in python and what essentially input function does is whatever you entered on your keyboard python will read it so let's say i'm defining a variable x and I'm saying I'm calling this input function within input function I can write anything let's say I'm saying enter number so what it will do input function whatever it will in the console it will write the message enter number and whatever end user you in this case will type on your keyboard it will read that number and it will say print you enter you entered let's say using plus operator i can write this x pretty simple i'm getting a number from a user i'm just printing it on the console so far we have not covered if statements but let's see how this is goes whether it's working or not and on the right top side we can see this green arrow just run this command and let's see what happens in our console and as you can see right here right in the terminal output we can see enter number so let's say i enter 25 and press enter i am getting the message you enter 25 so whatever I'm entering from my keyboard, this Python program is again printing, hey, you have entered 25. Now let's say, but the agenda of this session is to understand if statements, right? Now let's say there's a problem statement. Say you have to find whether a user has entered a positive number or a negative number, right? So you can enter anything, right? You can enter a plus one or minus one. 25 in this case which is positive by default and you could also enter minus 25 so our program should be intelligent to tell us whether end user has entered a positive number or a negative number just trying to correlate right this is a kind of conditions 
in 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 my problem statement there is some condition positive or negative right so whenever there is some conditions involved we can use if statements to write the logic so what we can do so now i will delete this i'm fine that hey i want to uh, take input from the user now i am going to use if statement so if in vs code you write simple if then intelligence right vs code is very intelligent it will provide us these options right you can use if if else so i am going to use this if else is statement so if you click on this if else this kind of syntax will be auto generated and as you can see this if here we can write condition followed by colon if condition passed we can write something if condition failed we can write the else part so there are two conditions so we are using if else statement if something happens do this else do another thing so in this case the condition is on x right so if i say x is less than 0 right which means this is mathematics if any number is less than 0 that means the number is negative and if, if the number is less than 0 i will say hey if the number is less than 0 then you could write you entered negative number this is simple example just to show what we can achieve with if else statement i'm just printing you entered negative number but uh, you could also write any complex logic in this right based on certain conditions and uh, if number is not less than zero which means number is greater than zero or equal to zero in that case i could say in the else part hey you have entered let me copy this in second case i would say you have entered a string we should always include in double quotes but in this case you have entered positive number Pretty simple, right? In line number one, I am taking input from the user by using input function, input enter number. Based on input, right? Two things can happen. A person can enter negative thing or a positive thing. And I am checking here. If x is less than zero, print you enter negative number, else you entered positive number. All right, fair enough. Now, using this, uh, this cylinder, you can clear the console window right now let's see how it goes we have written if else logic simple if i click on this in the console let's see what happens enter number right so in the console i entered let's say 56 wow i got an error trace back so whenever python programs some face some error right they always throw this message trace back so we got trace back which means there is some problem in our program some problem right and here's the problem this type error less than not supported between instances of str and int what kind of this problem is i will read again we are getting trace back and in trace back the description is type error less than operator not supported between instances of str and int which means we can compare apple and apple we cannot compare apple and dog so there are two different instances one is integer one is a string and we cannot use less than operator less than operator we can use only with integer int and whatever we input from keyboard it is being read as a string so Currently at line number one, x is a string type, but zero is integer. So a string less than integer, trace back, type error, right? So to handle this, we can use int function, which means whatever we are getting from keyboard or from user, we are converting it into int, right? After this, now x will become of type integer now x is integer zero is also integer apple can be compared with apple so less than operator can be used with integer so i hope 
with this fix our program should run let me clear the terminal if we run again right so enter number so let's say i have entered 56 you wow it's working fine so you entered positive number let's clear and rerun now this time let's uh, enter some negative number let's say minus 89 right i have entered minus 89 so my program should tell automatically that hey you entered negative number which means with if else condition we can write conditional logic and this is i have given this simple example that uh, this problem statement was if the user is entering any number you have to tell whether the person has entered positive number or the negative number so we have written an intelligent logic using if statement that whatever is being input by the user we are uh, telling them that hey you entered positive number or negative number so this is a simple example as i said earlier also we can write complex business logic inside these if block or else blocks but the agenda was to explain what exactly these if statements are so whenever in any problem statement if you feel there are some conditions involved right if this happens or condition a condition b then you should think that hey we can use if else statements to solve a particular problem all right so in this session we wanted to cover if statements i hope i have explained if statements and to, uh, with that i would like to conclude this session and thank you so much hey hi everyone in this session we will see python indentation and python comments so this python indentation is very important in python so let's get started so here i have this visual studio code and here it's a sample program so if you see right this is a six line program one two three four five six as you can see on the editor just notice if i put one space over here right so there's nothing changed nothing changed in the logic it's just that at line number three i have put one space and then i'm typing if x is less than zero right so this is a simple if else logic the point is if i run this program with this space at line number three let me run and see so python is not happy with this space so here's the point that I would, which i would like to make that indentation error we will get whenever we are not we are not following python rules of indentation so as you can see here so python says indentation error as you can see right over here in the terminal so line number three it's telling correctly that line number three indentation error unexpected indent and if i remove this right if i just remove this space so this this program should work fine as it was working earlier so i can enter the number let's say 56 and we got the output you entered positive number it's working fine so just be mindful whenever you are uh, using spaces or tabs right so indentation is very important so there should there should not be any blank when with the beginning of the line right so then you must be asking hey you are saying there should not be blank but why at line number four these are blank right so here's the, here's the point so this print statement is inside if block and that's why we are putting one two three I, I think three spaces right and then we have this statement so when i say three spaces the number of spaces are not important the point is these two print statements should be at the same line right so whatever spaces you are using if you are using one space two space so these spaces should be equivalent and i just noticed that there are four spaces as we can see one two three four and here also i'm using four spaces right 
all right so this indentation is very important in python let's see one another thing so as we as we just saw there's a four spaces right what if i do this thing no space right so in this print print statement at line number four we do no space let's see what will happen here you go we got indentation error so there's a python is saying expected indented block since this is the if statement we cannot write another statement just below if so we have to provide at least one space right so now you notice another scenario so this is if else block in first if statement i have given one space after the print and in the else block i am giving four spaces right now let's see what will happen let's run this as you can see the program is working fine right enter number 78 it's working fine you enter positive number which means if we are using any if statement so next statement followed by within the if block has to be at least one space you can provide multiple spaces but at least there should be one space and if i give the same thing in the else part right in if statement i have given the one space but in the else part it is at the same line right with no space and let's see what will happen in this case again we got indentation error expected indented block which means there has to be at least one space and if you think logically right so if there's a if else block and if you provide one space then it looks like okay there is something written inside if this space indicates that this print is written inside if statement and if you provide one space this will this will look like this print statement is written inside else block right so in order to provide them a block we provide one space and uh, if you're writing a simple statement there should not be any space so if i write the space in x i can be got indentation error so i hope the point which i was trying to make is clear just be mindful that uh, if you are writing any line there should not be any there should not be any space and when you are whenever you are writing some if block for loop while while if statement for loop while loop so those are then there should be one space within those kind of logical blocks all right i hope you have understood so next agenda item was python comments right this python indentation we have covered and now we will cover python comments so let's see so if you want to comment any number or any line what you could do you could put hash symbol so i have commented this line right so i think nothing will happen so if you put hash so this line number one will not be executed because this will this will be just like a comment right so if i run this so we, we got error that we have got error that name error name x is not defined because i have commented this line so x is not defined right and if you want to comment let's say let me uncomment this or maybe i can put um, let's say x is equal to 4 so i have defined for x sorry i have defined x as a 4 so this time our program should work so you entered positive number because this if condition is getting satisfied this is one way of commenting the line and if i want to write, write some meaningful information to my code then i can also put comment so for example if i would like to add more comment at this line number three saying that uh, checking condition for x something like this right then this way also i can write comment the main point is in python you have to put hash symbol before any if you want to write some comments that's that's the only logic and if i run this it should work perfectly fine so we can put 
comment this way we can put comment this way and uh, that's how you put comments right all right so in this session we wanted to cover this python indentation which is very important concept in python right and python comments these comments provide meaningful information or it, it makes your code more readable right so if in future after six months if you are reading your same code these comments will help and if, send, if your team member is reading your code base or the code written by you then these python comments will help a lot for, under, for understanding the code with that i hope uh, you have learned something today uh, in terms of python indentation and python comments that's what i that's all i wanted to cover in this session today thank you thank you so much bye bye hey hi everyone in this session we will cover for loop in python so this is very important loop in python so let's learn this and let's get started so here i have on the screen visual studio code vs code and using these icons you can create any python file and you can write python code inside that file so to explain for loop i will be creating one python file so this is the first icon if you see right here right in this section we can create using this icon a new file let's create and here i can give the name of the file so since this is for loop so i would say for loop loop.py simple right and here we'll try to understand what exactly for loop is so let's say i have that line number something right for loop is used for iterating something so if you have multiple things you can iterate so let's say i have a list of five numbers so i would say my my list list you can define using this rectangular brackets and here i can write 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 so i have these five numbers inside a list so in python you can define a list using these rectangular brackets so this is one very variable a kind of collection which contains multiple numbers now I want to print all these five numbers which are present inside my list. How can I do that? Simple, just use for loop for that. And if I use this, for For items, right? So in these items, there are numbers. So I would call these numbers as let's say for each uh, for x in I will use this in statement in my list. So for every x in my list, so I will read it. Uh, this is statement like this only. So x represents these elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm saying okay for every x in my list put a colon this colon is very important enter sign and notice there is a sum space right here so it, it provides us indentation so for x in my list I, I, I want to print I will use print statement and the print statement you always, you always use this bracket sign and inside bracket I can write x so this is simple three line code and I'm using for loop in Python. So here's a list of five integers and I'm printing those five integers using a simple for loop in Python. Let's run this program and see the output one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. And if I want to, so there, there could be another problem statement. So let's say you want, you have a list. Now you want to print double of every number, right? So one into two should be two. 1 into 2 should be 2, yeah. <laughs> and 2 into 2 should be 4, 3 into 2 should be 6, 8, 10, right? So I'm just trying to print double of every number which is present in my list. How you could, how you can implement this logic? Again, using the same for statement, the only thing which I have to do is 
print two types of x for multiplication we use this star sign or asterisk sign and if i run this program again so i can see i am getting the double values of every element which is present inside the list 2 4 6 8 10 so this is this was one scenario let's try to see another scenario so let me comment this so we can put hash sign for commenting in python so i will comment these three lines okay so using hash we can comment now i'm going to define my another list so let's say my new list list we define using these brackets so currently we have empty list and inside i can write maybe apple comma comma is very important orange comma banana so just notice in this scenario we have a list of strings in previous scenario we have a list of numbers so it doesn't matter whether your list contains numbers or string we can use for loop the same way which we were using earlier so now i want to let's say print all the fruits which is which are present inside my list how can i do that again use for for x in a statement or x in my new list so this is the name of collection list which contains all these fruits use colon and enter same way print always use bracket in python 3 and put x and let's run this here you go we have printed apple orange and banana right and uh, if somebody asks okay so these are the list of fruits now as you can see they, these are in lower case apple orange banana these are in lower characters lower case somebody wants to print them in upper case how you can do that pretty simple since these are strings right and for x x is also a string so we can use one string function which is x dot upper and with function we always use bracket sign so i will call it upper x dot upper i am printing let's see what will happen in this case just run this as you can see here in the terminal apple orange banana are in no uppercase character so we can do multiple logic modifications inside for loop and notice when we are right when, when i'm saying inside for loop which means i have to provide at least one space after this for so when we look at the screen at line number five and six print prints statement is inside for loop and that's the importance of indentation in python so we have to provide at least one space so at this time by default i have provided four space all right so using for statement we can iterate through the collections list right if there are multiple things available we can use for loop to iterate every element and we can perform some logic on top of that so in earlier case we applied the logic of making it two times and in this i'm i have applied the logic of printing plus making them in uppercase right so coming back to the agenda so in this session we wanted to cover for loop in python i hope we have covered python for loop and i hope you have understood and that's all that's all i wanted to uh, share in this session today thank you so much bye bye hey hi everyone in this session we will discuss while loop in python and also we will cover break statement in python so let's get started as we can see this is visual studio code and here 
I will be explaining while loop in Python. So uh, you can think of while loop as if like if there is a certain condition, if that is true, then some task will happen, right? And when that condition becomes false, that task will not happen anymore. Okay, so let me explain with an example. So let's say I have a variable i whose value is 1. Okay, now what we can do, we can use while loop. So if you type while, right, so we will see this keyword while. And after the while, you can write some condition, right? So condition is something like, let's say I want to do some operations when i is less than 6 followed by colon and here what I can do I can print the value of i fair enough now i is 1 and i is less than 6 which means this condition is true and I will be printed and what I will do I will keep on incrementing the value of i with 1 so to increment the value of i with 1 we can use i is equal to i plus 1 pretty simple so let's see let's run the program and see what the output we are getting here we go we can see the value as 1 2 3 4 5 right and when i is less than 6 right so at 5 this condition is true and imagine i the value of i is 5 and then again it is getting incremented by 1 so i becomes 6 and then while we'll check is 6 less than 6 false and that is the exit condition our loop terminals terminates at that very point right so uh, let me read and again so here the idea is while i is less than 6 i'm printing these five numbers let's say for some reason i want to print only one two three and this condition I cannot change while I less than 6. So what should be the solution in that case, right? Which means if we want to forcefully exit from the while loop, right? In that case, we can use break statement. So what I can do, so I'm printing i and what I'll do if I can put one condition if i is equal to if i double equal to double is the comparison operator so if i double equal to 4 which means whenever i becomes 4 choose the break statement right so this is my exit condition this is my break statement if whenever i becomes 4 i will break out of this while loop so let's see and see the output now i can see i i wanted to print one two three four sorry i wanted to print one two three but one two three four is getting printed which means when i is equal to four after that i'm doing break statement so what i can do if i is double equal to three then i should exit if i want to print the numbers one two three and as you can see here, this number is getting printed. So this is pretty simple example. The idea of while loop is we have to put some condition over here, which means let me write in a comment fashion. So what I'm trying to explain is while and here we write some condition. Condition could be any number less than something, any number greater than something. We can compare two things. So here it has to be some boolean things boolean means it should return true or false right so we will put some condition and we can use colon right and here we can write some logic let me put comment and below that some logic we can write and once that logic you can see that some logic will keep on executing unless this condition is true when this condition becomes false, this logic will not happen. And uh, in our example, the logic was printing of i variable.
and when the, some logic is happening within while loop and based on some third condition based on some other different condition if you want to forcefully exit the loop right if you want to come out of the while loop then we can use break a statement break a statement right so that's what i wanted to cover in this session today so uh, this was the agenda like while loop in python and break a statement and i hope you have understood what is while loop and how can we use while how can we use while loop and uh, the different scenarios in which we can use while loop the thing which should be the key takeaway of this session is we should write some break condition always some exit condition otherwise infinite loop may occur right so just be careful and mindful whenever you are writing while loop always make sure you are having some increment incremental logic you are incrementing something so that this condition becomes false after a point and or you can use some exit condition with some if statement and using break statement so whenever you are writing while loop just make sure you have exit condition ready otherwise infinite loop may occur and that may cause problem with that i, I would like to conclude today's session and thank you so much bye bye hi welcome back in this session we will discuss numbers in python so let's begin let's talk about numbers right let's say we have one variable x is equal to 2 so this is integer number right let's say we have y is equal to minus 23 and we have z is equal to let's say a big number right now these are numbers uh, and since i'm writing my program in a python file right so so these are just treated as numbers in python program python provides a very important function the type function using which we can we can come to know what kind of data type is present inside x y or z right so what we can do if i use print let's say print x always remember with print function we have to use x so I will copy this and let's paste x, y, and z, right? Let's run this. I'm just using a simple print function and uh, let me clear run again. As you can see, I'm printing x, y, and z. So minus 2, minus 23, and this big number 242. So what if I have I'm calling a type function which will tell me what is the type of this x right so let me see let me rerun as you can see this light number 5 I'm printing type of x as we can see in the terminal console the type of x is class int right so this is int of int type same way if I want to know the type of y so this function will provide me the type of y let me clear and rerun so x is also int y is also int and the big number let's see the type of this big number essentially the point which i'm trying to make is i can use type function to know the type of any number here we go class int 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 right here in the console terminal so all these numbers x y these these are integer type int numbers okay now let me change these numbers so let's say i am writing 2.5 and 23.0 and this number let's say so if you notice the change which I have done, so I have put decimals in these numbers, right? <clears throat> now let's run our program and see the type of these variables. 
now as you can see the type of variable x y and z becomes float so in python we have three types of numbers one is integer which we saw few seconds ago float which currently we are looking at there's one more type so let's see what that type is and that type is complex yes complex numbers we can also represent in python so let's say 2 plus uh, 4i right let me see all right as you can see on line number one i have written this complex number so complex number in mathematics consists of two parts one is the real part plus the imaginary part right so 2 plus 4j so this way we can represent complex numbers in python program and uh, so x is a comp x is containing complex number this is float this is float and if we use a type function of python let's see what output we will get as we can see in the console terminal so here the first one is complex the these two are float all right so this is pretty cool now i'm going to explain one more thing which is called type conversion i can okay let me write first this is type conversion so let's say uh, i know this is float right now i want to convert it to the integer right i can do that so if there is a number float i went i can convert it to integer so what i can do i can call int function simple so i can call int function now as as we can see the output in the console first one is complex notice the y the second one print type y pi, oh, sorry y has now become int right because we have used int function so we have converted minus 23.0 which is a float to the integer and same way if there is any integer uh, integer variable right so let's say this z is 4 this z is let's say 3 right now we know z is equal to 3 is integer so let's see first one is complex int int right now currently on my screen the variable z contains integer value i'm trying to explain type conversion now i want to convert convert this integer z to float z for that i can use float function of python so if i write float float of 3 let's see what happens let me clear so that it becomes more readable as you can see now z the last one the type of z the last here in the console log the last one has become float so we can convert between these three types in float and complex yeah <laughs> we can convert uh, to three into complex also so i can call complex function of python and these functions are important because python is widely used in on data science machine learning ai so that's why these numbers are supported and we are covering uh, some python numbers over here in this session today so if i write complex of three right which means this three is integer but i am explaining type conversion so i can call complex function now if i run this program the first one is complex the second one is int and the z the third one is also complex all right so this is pretty simple so we have int float and complex numbers in python and using the type function i can get to know the kind of data present inside any variable and also we can use type conversion if you want to convert from one type to another so we have seen the examples of converting into float float to complex complex to float so those things we can do with these type conversions all right so coming back to the agenda so i wanted to cover numbers in python and i think we covered a lot and i hope you have understood these python numbers concept
all right so that's all i wanted to discuss in this session today thank you thank you so much hey hi everyone what will you learn in this session let's see in this session we will cover how to assign a string to a variable in python and we will cover how to fetch each character from a string in python so essentially we are going to cover these two topics in this session so let's get started as you can see on the screen i have visual studio code and i have created one simple python file strings demo.py and let's see how we can assign a string to a variable so let's say there is a variable x we have to just write x right x is equal to you can use double quotes let's say hello word also let's say there is another variable y is equal to and you can also use single quote let's say hi word correct so if you want to assign strings to a variable in this example we have x and y then you could say hello word or hi word within double quotes or single quotes so this is pretty simple how we assign a variable to us how we assign a string value to a variable so let's say i want to i want to print x and similarly i want to print y so let's see print x print y let's run and here you go as we can see in the console uh, uh, in the terminal log right so we can see hello word and hi word so it doesn't matter whether you are using double quotes or single quotes at least you have to use one of these and also we can uh, double check the type of these variables using the type function so i can call type in order to get in order to get to know what type of data is present inside variable x or variable y so i can use type function to cross validate whether x and y contains the string values as we can see in the console output i got to know the type of x is class string str and also the type of y is class str so using the type function we can check the data which is present inside any variable so let me delete this y and uh, i'm going to cover the next topic which we have now let's see what was how to fetch each character from a string python how to fetch each character from a string in python so let's see how we can do that let's say i want to fetch x sorry h the first letter from this entire string hello world how we can do that it's pretty simple we can define index so if i write x the name of the variable and then square brackets and within square brackets if i write zero so this is first character which is at position zero so in python in fact in most of the programming languages the index starts from zero so character h is present at zero index e is present at one zero one two three four and so on so if i say print x of zero which means i am trying to fetch the first character from from x and x contains the entire string hello world so let me run and see what the output is as we can see in the console terminal we have h variable printed let's say i want to print o okay i want to print o how i can do that so this is at h is position h is at position 0 so 0 1 2 3 4 so this 0 sorry this o is present at index or position 4 and if i say i want to print x of 4 
let's see what's the output is we can see in the console right who is getting printed which means using 0 1 2 3 these indexes or these positions of characters we can find a particular character from a given string and this is pretty simple right in python so we can use index so a kind of using these square brackets we are able to fetch individual characters from a given string all right so this was the overall agenda for today's session so we i hope we understood how to assign a string to a variable using double quotes or single quotes we can define we can assign and uh, how we can fetch each character from a string in python that we can do using square brackets so using square brackets we can do uh, we can fetch individual characters from a given string so that's all i wanted to cover in this session today thank you thank you so much bye bye hey hi everyone what will you learn in this session so in this session we are going to cover how to loop through a string in python then we will see how to find length of a string and at the end we will cover how to check if a certain phrase or character is present in a string so we are going to cover these three things in our today's session let's move to visual studio code so i have on my screen vs code and let's see all right so let's say we have a string x is equal to let me give anything like my string value let's say okay my string value is the value of a string code or let me make it simple right let's say we have this this is keyboard just to make it simple otherwise value value will get confused this is keyboard all right and in python it's pretty simple how we can print any variable so just use print function inside square sorry inside these brackets put x any variable so the name of the variable in this case is x and if you run so this this is keyboard will get printed as you can see in the terminal log all right now how we can iterate through right how we can loop through this entire string character by character so we want to loop through okay so we can use looping looping in a string we can use and how we can do that using simple for loop using for loop and this is very interesting right this is one string right this is keyboard but i can iterate through these individual characters t h i s then i then s each every character i can iterate through how we can do that using for loop so let's say for um, for let's say i in x for every i in x i will print i two lines of quotes and we are done let me run as you can see initially we got the entire string this is keyboard and then i am looping through at line number four for i in x print i and this is printing everything t h i s then i s in fact the spaces it, 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 spaces are also getting printed this is interesting and k e y b o r d this is keyboard is getting printed vertically it it's looking like a vertical but in fact it's printing individual characters from the given string and let me explain one more time like what exactly this is so here essentially i am using for loop in python and this is the in statement and at the right hand side of in we write the complete list or the complete stuff which we want to iterate using for loop so x is the name of the variable i mean the stuff which we want to iterate so i have written 
at the right hand side of in statement and on the left hand side of in we write every element of that stuff so in this case every character of this entire string right so for every element or for every character in x print that element or that character so <laughs> that's how we read it and i'm able to print this this is causing confusion so let me comment this out using hash symbol we can comment anything in python let me delete and rerun so this is clean output now so dhis is every character i'm getting i'm able to print all right let's move on to the next topic how to find the length of any given string what do we mean by length length means the number of characters which is present inside this string so we can use print the length the length is let's say using plus we can concatenate in python we have this len function <clears throat> using len function we can find the number of items in a container so I, I can read through this so if you just you can see I have written len and it's Python is giving this intelligence of this Visual Studio code is giving me the information about len function so this lens function written the number of items in a container so this container could be a string in this case this container could be a list set right tuple anything any data structure of python <coughs> so in in our example it's this container is x i mean the string written the number of items right the number of characters if it's a string so and what we pass inside these square inside this parenthesis brackets the container x which contains the string right let me run this we got error we got type error interesting so whenever we encounter any error so python throws trace back so as you can see in the terminal log trace back we got and it clearly tells trace log sorry trace back file line number seven so line number seven there's some problem in this line number seven type error we got type error can only concatenate str not integer since i have used this concatenation plus operator so what this plus operator is essentially doing is it is concatenating this let me do control z this is concatenating this string because in double quotes we define a string so the length is colon it's a string and i am concatenating a string with int so i cannot add apple plus banana it's not possible in python i can add or concatenate apple plus apple or banana plus banana so the left hand side of plus operator is a string and the right hand side is int or integer so type error a string cannot be concatenated with integer and that's why python is saying trace back type error is a type mismatch so how we can solve this problem so we have to convert the int format into the string so that we can use this concatenation plus operator so it's pretty simple how we can convert using str function so i can use str so that inside str length of x whatever the length is right now we don't know so i can i can count because this is a small string in this case imagine we have a big string and we want the count of every character inside that string so we cannot use we cannot count manually in that case we have to use len function len function return the number of items in a container or the number of characters in a string and str will convert that number into a string so that it can it can be concatenated with another string i hope it makes sense uh, let me 
clear everything and run it again here you go our program ran successfully and this is the older output like every character from this for loop and if we go down down right here the length is 16 right so this length is 16 1 2 3 4 5 5 is a space 6 7 again space 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so we have 16 characters in this is keyboard entire string so using len function we can find the length of the string all right let's see what was the last topic of this session so we covered how to loop through a string using a for loop we also saw how to find the length of the length of the string using len function we can find and let's see how to check if a certain phrase or character is present inside a string this is pretty interesting so let's say I want to check whether keyboard is present inside X or not this X contains three words this is keyboard right I want to check whether this X contains keyboard or not how we can do that okay let me uh, what I can do I can I can comment these print statements otherwise it will create confusion when we will run this check condition right so let me run now and see I think we should not get any okay indentation error At line number 10 okay inside for loop let me comment this as well All right, we are good now so nothing is getting printed so it's it's equivalent to we have empty file so we have this x is equal to this is a keyboard now i want to check i want to check check if keyboard k e y b o a r d keyboard text is present and this is the example like I'm just checking a single word is present or not you can check any condition anything in a given string how we can do that we can do that using in statement so I'm gonna use in a statement so how we can do that if this keyboard which is a string in where in x right because x is the container which contains this string so i'm saying if keyboard in x then you can print text present or let me type the entire stuff so that in the console we should have meaningful logs so i will say okay so it's not complex at all it's pretty simple in two lines we are done so first line says x is equal to this is keyboard this is a string and at line number 11 i am checking if keyboard the word which you want to search in x x is the variable if it is which means if if condition is true then print keyboard text present let's see whether it runs or not here you go we got the output keyboard text is present and let's say I typed keyboard in place of keyboard I say maybe monitor if monitor is in x and x is this i think no it's not present let me run this and we should uh, so we got no output because this if condition does not satisfy and there is one more 
statement right else so because in the console log in the terminal we cannot see any output so I should type some I should write something in the else block also right so let's say else print maybe keyboard text not present with not as capital let me run this time okay we got syntax error syntax error at, at line number 13 else we got syntax error Alright, so as we can see, we got syntax error here in the else. So I just forgot to put semicolon, sorry, this colon, right? With if we put colon at the end, if else also we get, we should put colon at the end. This colon is very important in Python. So let me clear everything and run. So as you can see now, the error gone and we got the output keyboard text not present okay so let me summarize i can use this in a statement and i can check if something is present in some other thing if it is present if condition satisfied we can put some business logic so i'm just printing in this case else you can perform another business logic another operation if that condition does not satisfy right so that's how we can check anything present inside a given strings and just mind right uh, I'm using the entire word right you can also use any character is present or not right so let's say in this string I think character Z is not present and character T is present right so I can type if T is in X this time let me do this and this I can check single character also so I'm checking for T if T is in X let me run yes T is present can I do the for Z let's say I'm checking for Z Z or Z some, some people call it Z also so I call it Z if Z is in X manually I cannot see Z in this X let me run z text not present which means our this simple logic program is working perfectly fine and using any statement we can find whether something is present or not so let me see the agenda for today so we started with looping through a string we use for loop how to find length of a string we use len function how to check if a certain phrase or character is present in a string or not for that we used in a statement right with that we covered everything in our agenda today and that's all i wanted to cover in this session thank you thank you so much bye bye hey hi everyone in this session we will see uh, slicing of strings so let's see the agenda of uh, today's session so we are going to cover strings slicing in python we'll start with what is slicing of strings then we will see some slice operations and at the end we will cover slice operation using negative index so this is very important using negative index we will come to know what exactly the slice operation is in python so let's see the demo now so for demo i have this uh, visual studio editor vs code and in this python file slicing.py i have defined one variable x let's say x contains this string internal server error 500 so what exactly do we mean by slicing of a string slicing means to cut some part of the string slicing means cutting so let's say this is a big string and i want to fetch first five characters from this string right first five characters would be inter because i n t e r inter so let's say in this big string of x i want to fetch first five characters which is enter point to be noted here is 
and this is the main concept that we can iterate these characters of a string using index and index always starts at zero this is very important concept so i character is at position zero n is at position one t is t is at position two and so on index always starts at zero now let's see how we can how we implement slicing concept in python so let me demo so i'm going to use print function if i use print x so print x will print the entire string so let's see quickly so i'm running this program and as we can see in the terminal terminal log i am getting the entire string internal server error 500 right here in the bottom of the screen internal server error 500 it got printed if i do if i write bracket after x and if i provide i want to start from 0 i want to get, go till 5 0 to 5 correct so let's see i am using this colon operation this colon operation is called a uh, slicing of strings so here i am specifying a range of characters so i am saying hey print x but from position 0 to position 5 so let's see what we will get output of this as we can see in the terminal we got inter correct so we are able to fetch first five characters from the given string with the help of slicing concept and slicing is nothing within the square brackets we have to provide two numbers separated by colon and two numbers indicate range of characters slicing operation and because we know right a string index always starts from zero so no need to specify zero as well. so python is intelligent enough if we provide empty before colon it will understand okay you have to start from index zero let me clear this and run again and we will get the same output enter right so no need to specify uh, if you are starting at from index uh, like from index zero which is the starting of the string and let's say you want to fetch uh, and it is also possible that we should also skip from the end so randomly let's say i'm printing from position six so i know for first we have a for first five we have enter and i want to print from position six to the end of the string so position six would be zero one two three four five six six it starts from a all right so let me run this as you can see six starts from in a character a position so i'm in the terminal we got the output al server error 500 which means we started at position six and we all the way to the end right because till end because we do we don't know how many characters are there after six position so if we specify nothing after colon python is smart enough it understands okay he wants to slide slice till the end of the string and that's why we are getting the entire stuff so if i write anything after that and i don't know how many characters are there but still from index 6 we will get the output all right so as we can see we got the output till the end in the terminal console tail server error 500 and some gen characters so python understands and it provides the output till the end of the character all right all right so next item we will see is how we can slice the given string using the negative index yes so we'll see slicing 
strings using negative index what exactly it means slicing is string there's a typo all right so as you can see currently uh, we have a string internal server error 500 i'm just printing and in the console we can see internal server error 500 now let's see i want this 500 from the string correct let's say this is a requirement like uh, internal server error 500 error message we got and we want to see what is the code so 500 we want to extract we want to slice this 500 so how we can do that the same concept we will use the slicing concept for slicing we use colon and uh, we can pass two things before colon and after colon but here the concept is i want to start from the end which means this has to be empty and here i could type minus three right minus three okay right here just for more readability so as we can see here so this time i have given minus three and so left side of colon colon is the start index and right side of the colon is the end index correct beginning colon ending for the ending part i am saying nothing nothing means from the end and in the beginning i am saying minus 3 if it could have been plus 3 i mean without minus then 3 indicates 0 1 2 3 means e correct but since it's minus 3 so it counting will start from the right side 0 1 2 right and 3 which means the space so let's run this and see what's the output so if you see the output then it will become more clearer because uh, first time if i see print text minus 3 colon empty so it becomes difficult to understand now as we can see in the output in the terminal console right here so we can see right here right so we can see we have 500 right so we are able to extract this 500 now let's see let's do another thing let's say I have given let's say I have given minus 3 over here and empty in the beginning then what will be the output just think about it what should be the output in this case I'm doing this slicing by providing nothing in the beginning and for ending I'm saying minus 3 right so let's see the output I will run this program as you can see this time we got internal server error which means I have to start from the beginning right so here if we don't specify anything which means index 0 so we have to start from index 0 which means start from i and we will keep on traversing until minus 3 so minus 3 means 0 1 2 3 means this is space character so that's the reason we got this this part internal server error only okay so let me do this thing so we got this one right here internal server error when we are doing print empty colon minus 3 we got internal server error but when did when minus 3 was in the beginning and 0 at the end i mean empty at the end in that case we got the last three characters uh, from the ending so essentially what i'm trying to, exp to explain is using negative index you can start traversing from right to left okay from right to left we can traverse so we can travel from right to left all right from 0 1 2 so counting starts from the right side but when there are positive numbers i mean without negative index then counting starts from left to right okay i hope it makes sense and uh, that's all about slicing strings so we have covered like what exactly slicing is slicing means uh, cutting of strings or uh, extracting some range of characters from the given string 
and we can specify we can use this square brackets and colon and we can specify begin index and the ending index if we don't specify anything on the left hand side of the this colon it means starting right start from the beginning if we don't specify anything anything on the right right hand side of colon it means till the end and if we specify minus 3 or negative indexes it means we start counting from the right hand side i mean from right to left and that's pretty much about slicing of the strings in python and that's all i wanted to cover in this session today thank you thank you so much bye bye hey hi everyone so let's see what we are going to cover in this session today so we'll start with string modifications in python today so in python we have strings and we can do a lot of modifications on top of a string so we will cover upper case lower case how to remove white spaces replace and split so these are some operations which we can perform on a strings in python and we will cover because these modifications are very important whenever you are uh, developing any application or writing any uh, framework right so you have to modify a lot of strings depending on the business use case so that's why it's very important to learn how we can do string modifications in python so let's see the demo now so for demo let's say uh, we have a string so i have visual studio code on my screen and uh, we have this variable x which contains how are you right this x contain anything but for example i have taken this uh, string how are you okay okay so if i use a print function on x so let's see what we'll get so it will simply print the string x and in the console we are getting the output how are you right now let's say i want to convert it into the upper case the entire string x i want to print into the upper case okay okay so this is example of upper case right so in order to convert into upper case what we can do so we can call one of the string functions so since x is a string if i do dot i can see bunch of methods available in this x so there is one method upper so if i call uh, x dot upper and then a bracket correct and let's see if i run this program what should i get so I can, as we can see we are getting capital version of the string how are you and let me delete and run again so that it is more visible as you can see in the terminal logs we can see how are you is getting printed in all upper case right now let's say i want to print into lower case right so this is example of upper case and now let's say i want to print the entire stuff in lower case so how i can do i can again call print function and in this case i will call x dot lower so it, it is pretty simple right let me comment the previous so so it's pretty simple so x is equal to how you how are you and i want to print the entire string into lower case correct if i run this so now we can see this h has become smaller and rest of the stuffs were already in his lower case but the point to be noticed is now in the output every character is in lower case right so using these inbuilt functions of a string in python we can use to convert a given string into upper case and lower case it's simple just call upper method and lower method now let's say we have a bunch of white spaces so you got some string like this right and now if i use simple print function correct and print x so you notice in the given string we have a lot of spaces and in the output also we are getting this space right 
in the terminal it's not visible exactly but we can notice that uh, this how are you sh got shifted and let me put a bunch of more spaces and we can see more as you can see this how are you is now here so let's say you have this kind of a string who has uh, which has a bunch of spaces before and after and you want to remove these white spaces and then you want to print x correct so for that we can use uh, a strip method so python provides this strip method so we can call x dot strip what is strip function will do it will remove the spaces from the beginning of the string and from the ending of the string correct so as we can see in the output now so this was the previous output but now we have output with white spaces removed okay and same way if for some reason if you want to remove the what to say beginning spaces not the ending spaces in that case you can use there is one more method like x dot l strip so what l strip will do it will remove these spaces from the left side from the beginning of the string okay so let me run this l strip so l strip has removed from the beginning of the string but here there are spaces but because in, in console uh, we are not able to uh, visualize but there are spaces and on the same logic if we use if we want to remove the spaces from right side but we want to preserve spaces in the beginning right so for that uh, for that purpose we can use another function which is r strip which is uh, remove the spaces from the right hand side so r strip and brackets so this is a string which has a spaces in the beginning and at the end now i am calling x dot r strip which will remove the spaces from the right side and these spaces will not be removed so let me run this as you can see uh, right side spaces got removed but there are still spaces in the beginning of the string in the left hand side and this was the previous output right so there were no spaces on the left hand side but here we have spaces so essentially what i'm trying to explain is uh, there is a strip function you know, for we can use to remove the spaces and we have uh, flexibility to remove the spaces from the beginning or from the end by using l strip or r strip function all right now let's move on to another topic so this is our string okay let me remove these spaces okay now there is one more method to uh, let's say i want to remove in fact i want to replace this h with w okay i want to replace this h character with w so how so this is a case in scenario of a replacement so this is scenario of hash replacement so how we can perform this operation i want to remove in place of how are you i want to see wow are you it doesn't make sense but i just for example i am taking this wow are you so for that we can use replace function so x is a string dot replace so this replace function is also provided by python uh, in replace we can pass two parameters so i want to replace h with comma w all right as simple as that so i want to replace h with w so first parameter is what you want to replace and second parameter is with what you want to replace all right so if i run this so we should see the output and as we can see in the terminal log so we got the output wow are you okay wow are you we are got we got so we can use this replace function to replace any character any sub string with anything 
all right now let's say you want to there's a another scenario let's say you want to split these characters sorry these substrings so how are you you want to extract these words from a given string correct so for that we can use a split function so python also provides a split function so what we can do print x dot split and in split function we have to provide on what basis you want to split this string so i want to split on the basis of these spaces right so i will say split by spaces so when we say uh, we want to split by spaces which means if we don't provide any parameter so by default this split function will split this string into spaces and you will get a list of these substrings correct so let me run this so as we can see in the output we got a list which contains how are you correct we work we got the substrings and let's say uh, in in our given this is comma separated string correct this, let's say this is comma separated string and there is no space in this how comma r comma u and if i use this split function let's see what will happen okay so we got only one single list element right so this is a list but it contains only one entire string so split has not happened correct and if we want to get individual words of this which is separated by comma in that case i should use comma as a, as my splitter right on what basis i want to split so in this scenario i want to split on the basis of comma and if you run now as you can see now you got comma separate now you got list which contains three elements how are you so these are individual words all right so let me recap what we have done so this was our added agenda string modifications in python so we saw how we can you convert a string into upper case and lower case by using upper and lower function we also saw how we can remove white spaces for that we have used a strip function so uh, there, there are two flavors of a strip <coughs> l strip also and r strip also then we saw replace so we replace h with capital w right so replace function we can use for replacing anything from a given string and at the end we saw a split function using which we can split a given string on the basis of space or on the basis of comma or any any separator of a string uh, words right so that's pretty much i wanted to cover in this session today i hope uh, you have understood and you will use these concepts in your projects with that i would like to conclude this session today thank you thank you so much for watching bye bye hey hi everyone what will you learn in this session today let's see in this session we are going to cover string modifications in python essentially we will see what is string concatenation and how are we going to do string formatting in python so let's get started so i have visual studio open on my system and as we can see i have uh, just empty file empty python file here we can write python code so let's say let's start with string concatenation so let's say i have one string x is equal to let's say um, let's say page not found and let's say we have another string which i call message is equal to the error is fair enough so we have two strings now i want to combine these two strings or i'm i want to concatenate these two strings right so concatenation means to join two strings or to combine two strings so x and message these are two strings and i want to concatenate in python we can use plus operator for concatenation so let's see so i'm using print function here i'm going to print message and plus x pretty simple so this 
plus sign is the concatenation operator and I'm combining and joining these two strings using plus operator pretty simple let me run this program uh, by clicking this play button green button on right top corner so if I click on this so in the terminal logs we should see this message error page not found the error is page not found correct so the error is page not found pretty simple so I can see these two strings got combined okay let's say now x is let's say 404 let's see what happens in this case so now again we have same variable x in this time I have put 404 a number an integer into x message contains a string and x contains number value or integer value let's run this program as we can see in the terminal we got trace back which means there is some problem and python is saying hey type error this concatenation right can only concatenate str not into str which means we can combine string to string using plus operator but we cannot combine python is complaining that hey you cannot combine a number 404 with plus sign right but the requirement is i want to print the error is 404 and it could be uh, like a real life example like it could be real life requirement right i want to print some number within the within the string the error is 404 then how we can solve this problem in python so for that python provides format function right so we can use format so this time we will not use plus because this is number and this is a string so plus cannot be used so python says hey in these scenarios you can use format function so if you write message dot format correct message dot format this message is string and string class provides format method so i am calling message dot format but here i have to use curly braces right i have to define a placeholder for this number so in my a string in which I want to concatenate another string I have to provide a placeholder by using curly braces right and in this format function I will pass okay I want to format X into my message simple uh, two lines of code in message I have to define a placeholder with curly braces I repeat and I will call format method and I'm saying hey I want to format this message by passing X which means 404 when I say by passing X which means I am passing it right so there should be some placeholder for X so X goes into this curly braces and in the console in the terminal we should see now the error is 404 let's run So as we can see in the terminal now we got the message the error is 404 pretty simple now no complaints no trace back no type error correct and happily we are able to combine a string the error is with a number 404 by using format method and with curly braces and let's say now we have few more numbers right let's say x y Let's say we have this 200 correct now there are two numbers x and y and now let's say i want to see uh, let's say I, the message is now um, maybe some expected is some placeholder but actual is and then so what essentially i'm doing so let's say I have this message I want to print expected is some number but actual is another number and when I say I'm using these two curly braces which means I'm defining a placeholder for two for, for two things for two stuff right so which means I can pass two things because I have defined two placeholders with curly braces so in this case message dot format I can use x comma y right x comma y 
so x contains 404 in fact and y contains 200 in fact everybody expects 200 uh, when when it's uh, assuming it's a http status code uh, but the actual is 404 because of some client error so let's say i want to see okay i will tell you another thing how we can do but let's see i'm passing x and y two place holders are there let's see what the message is so as you can see the expected is 404 but actual is 200 right but let's say i want expected is 200 but actual is 404 in that case what i can do i can use index also right so this is at index 0 and this is at index 1 this format parameters can be called with index so this is x x is at index 0 y is at index 1 so let's say here i am saying index 0 and here i am saying 1 now let's see what happens in this case which means in the placeholder i can define indexes also let's run now and now you can compare this time we are getting expected is 200 but actually is 404 right so i hope you understood this concept if we don't specify any index within placeholder curly braces the initial one when there is no numbers inside curly braces the order in which we have given x comma y it will appear it will appear in the string so whatever contains x it will come into here whatever y so in whatever order we have given x comma y same order will be preserved but if you want to change the order and if you want to uh, use index and this is the example which i have done so i have used index so x0 i have placed over here and y is an index one i have said one y contains 200 that's why we are getting expected is 200 so with index we can rearrange our parameters but if we don't specify any index in the curly braces which means the, the order in which parameters are appearing in the format function same order will appear in the concatenated string or the uh, formatted string i would say all right so let me recap whatever we have covered today so if there are two strings or three strings we can use plus operator but for concatenating it for joining it but if there is a number and a string then we have to use format method and in format we have we can pass what we want to combine and in the original string we have to provide some placeholders with the help of curly braces and rest of the examples we have already covered with that let's see what was in our agenda so for today i wanted to cover two topics essentially string content concatenation and string formatting and that we have done using this example with that i would like to conclude today's session and thank you so much for watching all right bye bye